guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Reading Bear, and I hope you are ready for some more stories. And today, we'll take a look at some new entitled people content. If you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comment. And now, let's dive right into the stories. The first story is titled. Homeowner Association sold my $500,000 home at an auction for $30,000. Did you know that an homeowner association can just sell your home from underneath you if you are behind on your dues? Well, depending on where you live, they can and will without you even knowing it's happening. I live in a state that has a super priority lien law, which basically means exactly what I just mentioned. If you owe your homeowner association then they can sell your place for practically nothing. There is absolutely nothing that you or your mortgage lender can do about it either. I learned the hard way about the super priority lien law. First, my wife and I were in a car accident. A bad one. Both of us were injured significantly, but I have had the longest lasting issues from that day. I broke my back but have managed to slowly regain the ability to walk and have made pretty good progress. You can probably imagine how much our medical debt started piling up. Even with my decent health insurance it was still just insurmountable. Months of being in the hospital drained us financially and got behind on bills and the mortgage. Eventually, we filed for bankruptcy and started the process of selling the house. I had a realtor and we even had an interested buyer, who was willing to pay us more than we were expecting. After all, the house was a nice one with a large lot and updated finishes, he was going to be getting it for a steal. I had been recently attempting to stay more in contact with the WA about things. I had no inkling that they might be trying to sell my house. The short sale was in progress and I let them know that I was going to be getting them their money soon. I still had plenty to settle with my mortgage lender and other things going on too. On top of that we were trying to move into our rental home that was also handicap accessible since I would be in a wheelchair on and off for several more months. I learned a few days into my short sale with my buyer that my house had been sold at an auction just that same day. How can this be? I thought it was some kind of joke. But my realtor was just as stunned as me. She said that it appeared like the homeowner association was the ones who orchestrated my house's sale and that it went for a mere $30,000. My home is worth at least $490,000. My wife almost fainted, I genuinely felt chest pains. How? I wasn't sure what to do or say. Our realtor, Sam, reached out to the man that purchased our home for such a ridiculous price and he was willing to talk with us. His name was Jim and he seemed like a nice guy. I was hoping that there was some way that we could undo this mess. He said that he was unaware that we still lived there and that the homeowner association was selling the house out from under us. Our realtor said that the homeowner association was supposed to inform someone if they were purchasing a home under the super priority lien law. Not that it held any legal standings if they didn't. Jim said that he was sorry that this had happened to us and that he would see if there was any way that he could help. It was over a week before we would hear from Jim again. Sam said that it was unlikely that there was any way to take back what had already been done and that we may have to cut our financial losses, which were huge. We were already in bankruptcy and couldn't see the light at the end of this shitty tunnel. One day, while we and some friends were trying to get things packed a knock came at the door. It was Jim. I also wanted to preface this with it's near the holidays. Just before Thanksgiving. We were both feeling discouraged but we were trying to look forward to spending time with family to make up for the last year. It's cold outside and I invite Jim inside. I've been using my walker, trying to spend more time on my feet as part of my physical therapy and rehab. Jim compliments my efforts as the last time he saw me I was only using the wheelchair. I'll admit that he always came across as a nice guy. He broke the news that there's not much he can do to fix what has happened with the auction of our house. He asked us what the original buyer we had was going to purchase the home for. We were asking $450,000 and because we were willing to move so quickly he was going to pay another $5,000. Conversation tapered off to other less serious subjects and we offered Jim a beer. He was decent company and our friends seemed to like him too. We ordered some pizza and made jokes laughing about times before our accident that changed our lives. Jim and our friends shared stories about jobs and we found out that he is some kind of business owner. He didn't go into it too much. My wife brought out her famous pumpkin pie and everyone indulged with our drinks and laughed, I almost forgot about how shitty things had been. It's weird that I'm sitting here laughing and enjoying a beer with the guy who just essentially screwed us, 
even though it was really the homeowner association. Near the end of the evening I saw that Jim had wandered away, I couldn't help but notice how he was checking the house out while he was here. I mean, he does own it now. I see him writing on something at the end of the kitchen countertop. He walks over to me and my wife, at this point, it's just the three of us because our friends are gone or sleeping on the couch or guest bed. Jim is holding an envelope. I'm not even sure what to speculate is about to happen. Is this good? Is this bad? Just when I was liking the guy the first started questioning his motives. The envelope had our names on the outside. He started saying that he was sorry that he couldn't do anything about the way that the sale happened. But he still wanted to help us out because he can see that we are good people who fell on difficult times. As he handed us the envelope he stated that he didn't want anything in return and that he is happy to do it. As I look inside I see the numbers 460 Kelvin's dollar written on a check with Jim's signature. I started feeling chest pains again and I also thought my wife might faint. We were both in such shock that we couldn't speak. My wife began crying, tears streaming from her face as she reached out and took Jim's hand. He pulled her in for a hug and said that he was glad he met us. I'm still speechless, staring at the envelope. He pulls away from my wife and reaches out to me, shaking my hand firmly and looking me in the eye as he said that he wanted us to have the money, as long as he could have the house. I didn't know what to say except, of course, and finally went in for a hug. Staying in the house wasn't part of our plan anyway, we just wanted to sell it and move into a rental. It was time to move on to a new chapter in life. I'm still to this day so thankful for Jim and his generosity. We were able to pay off the rest of what we owed on the house and had a small amount left over for ourselves in the end. We still remain in contact and get together for cookouts a few times a year. Jim currently lives in the house with his wife and has three daughters that are the cutest. Even though we were screwed by our homeowner association, we ended up meeting a great friend who helped us more than they ever could in the end. The next story is titled. Entitled Neighbor Wants Her Kids in My Garden. So glad to have found this subreddit, because I have a legit crazy neighbor with boundary issues. I, 29 female, don't have any kids, but have my younger sister, 16, living with me for around 10 years, and we have a trampoline still in our back garden from when she was younger. Neighbor to the left of me, has four kids, and moved in a year ago. Two weeks ago, Glasgow started getting really good weather, so the kids have been out playing constantly, not an issue. They asked if I could let the kids use the trampoline one day, so I was like sure but only for a bit because I have friends coming over for some drinks. 7 pm comes, I ask them to go home because my five friends have shown up, and we're going to be drinking. Cue the crying, they leave the garden upset but hey, that's not my issue, they've been on it for three hours at this point. Their mum pops her head out her bedroom window and asks if they can stay in the garden longer. Um, no, I'm not your babysitter, she's annoyed but drops it. Last week, I come home from some shopping, and to my surprise, find all four of the kids in the garden, plus their younger cousin. Ask them to leave, tell them they can't just come into my garden without me there and they didn't even ask. They refuse to leave, so I shout up at their mom and tell her to get them out the garden. She says, let them play for a bit, you don't even use it. Okay but still, not your garden? Eventually we get into an argument, and they leave, she's pissed off and shouting saying I'm being a Karen and I should let them in. I tell her not to ask again because the answer will be no. This happened again the day after, all four kids plus their cousin, waiting till I move the car from the drive and heading straight into the garden. So I wake up this morning. I've since put a lock on the trampoline, just a small one on the mesh safety enclosure to stop them opening it up, cause I'm petty AF. Plus it's Saturday, I'm not working today, my day off and I want a long lie. But no, neighbor decides that at 9am this morning, her kids are being fired straight out that house with breakfast bars and a bottle of water, and they head straight into the garden. So I can hear them from my window, I look out and tell them to leave. By the time I get downstairs, mum has descended from her house, and is trying to climb the fence between our gardens, shouting about how I used to let them use it and she's going to call the police for hitting her kids. Um, great, you do that. I'll be sure to show them the ring camera footage, which coincidentally also has footage of your husband picking the lock open so your brats can use the trampoline. So long story short, entitled mother send her kids into my garden repeatedly even after being told not to. Calls police on me for harassment and hitting her kids and ends up getting her own husband arrested for theft and housebreaking and criminal damage. Suck it, witch. Edit.
Some people have asked if I could sell neighbor the trampoline. She has a V-shaped garden and the smallest one on the street, the trampoline is 12 feet and wouldn't fit. Also gave her a bunch of my sister's old stuff when she first moved in, but have barely interacted with her since this. Edit 2. Decided that it's not worth the hassle, 10 minutes ago, 9.50 pm here in the UK, I took a knife and slashed the part you jump on. Brother is coming on Tuesday to help me dismantle it, and we will take it to the local recycle center. Hey everyone, thought I'd give a quick update on what's happened since this incident. I had a few messages from people so I figure some might be interested to know. Main point I guess is that the day after this happened, I spoke to the police about the charges and asked if they could let it go. There was a charge of theft too, because the dad had moved tools out of the way, and threw them into his garden, but they got thrown back in, so I wasn't missing anything. They initially asked me if I wanted the oldest kid charged, she looks a lot younger, I assume 10 but she's actually 13, because she was the one who climbed the fence first, then went through my drive to open the gate and let the younger kids without climbing over. Since seeing the dad at the local shop, he just sort of apologized quickly and thanked me for letting it go, I think the realization that his daughter could have been arrested was a wake-up call. Haven't heard an explanation though, maybe he wasn't thinking about how serious it would end up. The mum on the other hand, absolute crazy woman. I had mentioned that she told police I had hit her kids, absolutely untrue, but she also decided to tell a couple of neighbors that I hit them, had two people ask me about this. She also put some sort of barbed wire at the top of the fence? To stop me climbing over? She's also chained her outdoor grill slash barbecue and dismantled the swing set I gave her when she moved in, and I thought I was petty? On a maybe related note, I had a visit from the SSPCA about animal abuse even though I don't own any pets. They seem pretty annoyed about being called out for a prank, so I don't know what happens with that. Also been asked about my sister's involvement with the story. I just mentioned her at the beginning because I wanted to explain why I was 29 and had a trampoline in my back garden. She also wasn't home at the time because she has clubs on, by the time she got back it was all over. Overall though, haven't had any more issues from it. The trampoline is now gone, kids haven't really been out because it's been raining the past week. Rarely see the dad around as he works, and the mum spends her days in her own garden, being the most obnoxious Glesga scheme ma you could imagine. The next story is titled. My 69-year-old neighbor's alarm clock has been going off since 8 a.m. She has a hard time balancing without her walker. Last night I had to help bring her laundry to her apartment because she couldn't do it herself. I knocked on her door multiple times and called out her name. I couldn't hear anything except the alarm clock. I called 911 to ask for a welfare check. They said they would send someone over. It's been an hour so far and I haven't heard anything back. What else can I do? I'm concerned and anxious and don't know what else to do. She told me she's alone and she was so out of breath just trying to go up the curb to the sidewalk last night, I'm scared she may have fallen. Update. I heard a lot of sirens go by but since I live right next to a fire department and a hospital, I wasn't sure if it was for my neighbor or unrelated issue. I went by to check on her. The alarm clock stopped, but she still didn't answer. I will try to find out what happened. Update 2. Everyone is wanting an update and so am I I am getting different answers on who I am supposed to call for an update. Do I call dispatch again? A non-emergency number? My local PD? I'm going to try and answer the most common questions. I have crazy social anxiety and I'm scared if I try to just walk in her place or break a window inside, it's gonna make things a lot worse or awkward. I'm worried if I show too much concern like knocking on her door again or calling someone, people will think I'm crazy. I plan on walking by again to check on her. Update 3. I went by to check again. No answer. The alarm clock was off so I want to safely assume that she either turned it off that night when someone did a welfare check or someone else did and helped her. I called two local PDs in my area but since it's Sunday I've been getting redirected to answering machines. I'm going to try again Monday morning because at this point I don't think knocking on her door every few hours is going to do anything. Another Redditor commented that since she has a hard time walking she might not want to use the energy to come to the door for just a checkup. Last update. She's okay. My local PD finally called me back around 3 today. I asked for a follow-up regarding the welfare check on Saturday night. They said someone came by and she answered and she's okay. He adult son was there too. The reason for the alarm clock going off all day was because due to her limited immobility she couldn't reach to turn it off. It raises more questions if I'm being honest. Like, 
Why didn't her son turn off the alarm until someone came by? And why did no one answer when I knocked multiple times and called out to her? The last story is titled. Delusional neighbor bangs on the shared wall when our baby cries and nothing can be done about it. I live in a duplex in Washington state with my husband and my son, who is only a few months old. My Phil owns half of the duplex and is renting it to us, and the other half is owned by an older woman and her adult daughter. My Phil has known the women for over 15 years, and told us before we moved in that the daughter was mentally ill and had strong delusions on occasion that caused trouble with the previous tenants. The last tenants apparently had to get a civil anti-harassment order placed against the daughter, but eventually moved out when the behaviors never stopped. Apparently the neighbor accused them of kidnapping and abusing their children, and abusing their dogs. My husband and I brought our son home a few months ago, and we didn't have any issues with the neighbor until about two weeks ago. She has begun banging on and throwing things at the walls when our son cries. She screams at us as well, but I usually can't hear what she's actually saying. You know, over the screaming baby, and the two dogs going absolutely ballistic because of the banging. It's absolute chaos and it has made my postpartum anxiety so much worse. Every time the baby cries I experience intense panic, waiting for the screaming and banging to start. We have called the non-emergency police line twice when I can't handle it anymore and feel close to a meltdown, and the first time they talked to her and she stopped doing it as often. Maybe once every two days. Tonight she is back at it and worse than ever. The air quality is so bad right now from the fires that I can't let the dogs out for long to stop them from barking, and the barking makes the baby cry harder, which makes the neighbors scream and pound on the walls harder. The officer I spoke with says we can try to get a civil anti-harassment order placed, but he knew for a fact that her behaviors never stopped after the last tenants tried that and he said his unofficial advice would be to live somewhere else. Is that seriously my only option? We can't afford to move but I can't keep living like this. Update. Short version. In October 2020, my husband and I were renting in a duplex where my Phil owned the half we lived in, and a separate family, adult daughter acting as caregiver to elderly mother, owned the other half. We brought our son home from the NICU in August, and towards the end of September the neighbor, 40s female, started to pound on the shared wall if she could hear him cry. The pounding escalated over the next two months. The neighbor bought a megaphone to yell through the wall and threatened to rip us apart. She called us child predators, and she'd yell obscenities and threats until 3 or 4 in the morning. The police were called multiple times, nothing could be done about it. One officer told us I'm going to kill you. See, it doesn't mean anything if I don't actually do it. The elderly mother hadn't been seen in several months, but requests for wellness checks were brushed off. The general advice I got was that as renters, we couldn't do anything. It was also suggested that this was reasonable behavior, since the crying baby was probably really annoying. Since my first post, we moved in with my grandmother for our safety. The neighbor ended up busting a softball-sized hole through the shared wall to scream at us, and occasionally just stare at us. The smell that came out of the hole was indescribably bad. Our security cameras recorded her coming to my son's nursery window at around 2 a.m. almost daily, just staring and holding her cat. It took until the end of January for the police to be able to enter her property. The elderly mother had been deceased since at least June, and the daughter had the corpse dressed in her Sunday best, rotting in a dead bolted bedroom. The news article said the mother died from natural causes. The daughter was taken to an inpatient psychiatric facility. Thanks for listening.